What's up guys? Welcome back to my channel. Philip the Pilot here with another video. One of my subscribers asked a couple questions. The first is whether or not you're required to have any type of prerequisites to become a pilot. And the second is what's it like to fly a plane? which I thought is a really good question because it's something I haven't talked about on this channel at all. I have spoken extensively about my life as a pilot and what I think of it as a career. But let's take the first question. Do you require any type of pre prerequisites to become a pilot? It is no, no. The first time I saw a plane, I was 15 years old. The first time I flew a plane, I was 24 years old. I didn't know what a wing was. I didn't know how a wing worked. I didn't know what was an aileron, what was a rudder, what was the tail. I didn't know what an empennage was. I knew absolutely nothing about planes. In fact, the first time I sat in a small single engine piston, and I looked at the instrument, naturally I was completely lost. But we have been training individuals to become pilot for a hundred years since the Wright brothers first flew. As a result, we have come up with a really good system, a really fantastic and safe way of taking someone from the streets to becoming a fully qualified and safe pilot. In fact, if I go out my house right now and the first person I meet and I ask them, do you want to be a pilot? Assuming he or she says yes, we can be at a flight school and they can be doing their first flight within the hour. It's that uncomplicated. The reason it is so successful is because many instructors have multiple ways of presenting the same information to various individuals based on that individual learning preferences. Okay? It, is, it is not without its challenge because you're, you're trying to learn some, something new. I'm not sitting here and saying that it's easy. It is not, but it's not difficult. I also wouldn't consider myself a an excellent student. I think I was an average student. I did okay in school. So the idea that you require some high level of intellectual or critical thinking ab abilities is just not true. You obviously need to be patient because you're trying to teach your body to do something new. And you, you're trying to acquire knowledge that is foreign to you. And over time, once you are consistent, you keep trying, you keep listening to your instructor, you will absolutely get it. And for people who, who, who tell you you can't, just look at me. I was born in South America in a communist country where having a dream to become a pilot was totally nuts, yet here I am sitting before you as a very successful pilot. So if you definitely want to do it, you can absolutely do it. And you don't have to be Albert Einstein, Elon Musk, Sir Isaac Newton, or anyone with, with those levels of intellectual capab capabilities. You just, need to be, you just need to be patient and you just need to be humble. And I think everyone needs that when they're trying to learn something new. So, no, you don't require any type, of, any type of prerequisites to become a pilot. The second question was, what's it like to fly a plane? Um, for, for every pilot, it's different. For me, it's fun. I really like flying um, planes. If I don't fly a plane for about three to four weeks, I begin to get like, I wanna fly, I wanna fly, I need to fly because I love flying. Uh, being a pilot, flying a plane is a perishable skill. That is to say, if you don't use it, 
you begin to lose it. For me, it's three to four weeks. And it's not that I cannot fly the plane anymore. I can still fly it. What begins to slip away are the nuances, the small things about being a pilot that an instructor can teach you. It's stuff that you learn as you go along, such as how much back pressure to put on the yoke to get the plane to fly off the runway. How does the plane feel like when it's light and when it's heavy? How much pressure to put on the rudder when you're in a bank? What the sound of the wheel is as it, as it enters the um, wheel storage compartment? The sound of the engines? How, how, how you scan the, instru the instruments? Those things are still there. They're just not at their optimum ability as they were before you stop flying for three to four weeks. For me, I tend to regain those, those finer things that makes you a really good pilot in about one flight. And, if, and it doesn't matter how long the, the one flight is. It could be 30 minutes, it could be an hour, it could be an hour and a, and a half, but the skills return. I, I typically compare being a pilot who haven't flown for three to four weeks to a golfer. The golfer can still go on the golf course and hit a ball and they'll be fine. What he or she may not be doing as well as the war before they take that break is hitting a, a curve ball putting a spin on the ball, reading the distance from where the ball is to where the hole is and choosing the right club. Because both golfing and being a pilot are such mental and, and physical skill, you have to do it consistently to remain fresh, to not lose it. But there are two big things I believe it's really important when you are flying planes. The first one is the visual the pilot gets from the cockpit as he or she is approaching the runway. It's different for every plane. If you fly a big Boeing 747 or an Airbus A380, those planes have you sitting up high. Thus, the pilot's view of the runway as they're approaching to land is totally different from that of a pilot that's flying a single engine Cessna approaching to land on the same runway. Sometimes the runway may look wider, sometimes it look narrower, sometimes it looks like it's further away, sometimes it looks like it's closer, and it all depends on whether or not the pilot is sitting higher, it depends on the size of the plane, it depends on how fast the plane is going, it depends on whether it's on whether you set the plane up at a three degree glide slope or a two degree glide slope. It depends on so many things. And those things you tend to lose the longer you stay away from flying. The other thing you you struggle with when you first start flying again after three to four weeks is speed control. It takes you a while when you're flying to, to get the speed right because you end up doing this with a throttle back and forth, back and forth, trying to figure it out. And then probably about 30 minutes into the flight, it clicks again and you go like, oh, then you just set it, forget it, and the plane works. Like I said, these skills don't go away. They just diminished, but they're still there. And finally, your body is really cool. It, it conditions itself to what you're doing. Thus, psychologically and physically, your body knows that you're flying a fast and heavy plane. Thus, your muscle memory and your, your mental mem mem memory are conditioned to do that. However, when you jump from flying a fast jet plane 
to a single engine plane such as a Cessna, a single engine piston plane, you struggle because your brain isn't conditioned to fly something that is that small, that's that slow, and give you a, diff a, different, visu a different visual of the runway as you're approaching it. For this reason, it is highly, ad it is highly advisable for pilots to go up with an instructor if they intend to fly a single engine piston plane, having not done so for many years. I do the same thing though. I haven't flown a single engine plane in years. And if I was to fly one today, I wouldn't do it without an instructor. It's just different. It's totally different. It's slow. You think the plane is gonna fall, fall from the sky you go down the runway and you're like, what is wrong with this thing? Because it's taken off at 50, 55 when you're accustomed to taking off at maybe 110 or 120. It's, it's just weird. Good. I think that's it for this one. I hope I answered your questions. Thank you for submit submitting them. I welcome any suggestions that you may have or any topics you think I should cover next. That's it for this one, guys. Until next time, be good.